In this lesson, we're going to be talking about LDAP. LDAP is the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. When I'm talking about directory, I'm not talking about a folder in a file system. We're talking about a different kind of directory. We're talking about something along the lines of a phone book or a contact list. We're talking about that type of directory where it's basically a way of storing a lot of information in a way that can be found quickly and easily. In the case of LDAP, for the purposes that we're going to be talking about, one of the big things that you're going to be looking for with LDAP servers is a way of storing information about users, systems, printers, and other resources on a network, particularly in a large enterprise environment. The reason for that is Several years ago now, Microsoft moved to an LDAP model to store information in their Windows Server family. That became the way that they were going to move forward in managing their network and their systems. And you've probably heard of Active Directory. Active Directory is an implementation of LDAP. It's sort of like a database in that it stores information and we can query it easily. The difference with LDAP, though, is it's hierarchical in nature. And part of that comes from the fact that LDAP is lightweight. You'll see the word lightweight in Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. It's lightweight because it's a subset of a larger set of protocols that are related to x.509 certificates. And let me show you something quickly here. I'm going to connect to a server that's running LDAP. And I'm using a tool called J Explorer, running on a Mac OS system, although J Explorer does run on other systems as well. And there are certainly other tools that you can find that will connect to LDAP servers. And I'll show you another one for Windows shortly here. You can see here in the connection dialog box, I can select the protocol that I'm using. I'm gonna use LDAP version three. I can change my base DN and the DN is distinguished name. So I'm not gonna change my base DN. I'm just going to let J Explorer pull everything that it can. I'm going to connect with anonymous access, meaning I'm not actually going to authenticate. I've got a choice here of anonymous user and password, SSL and anonymous, meaning it would be encrypted. So the way I'm going to connect is completely unencrypted, which means anybody who has access to this network that I'm sitting on with this system could extract this information and see what's being passed forward. And in this case, they're not going to see an awful lot because the LDAP server that I've got doesn't have a lot in it, just a simple LDAP server that's sitting there so that I can show you how to connect to it and how to get information back. But if I were to use this to connect to an Active Directory server and it allowed the connection and pulled information back, not only would I be able to see that without this encryption, but anybody else who had access to the network could potentially see it as well. I could also do encrypted plus authenticated, but in this case, I'm just going to do anonymous and I'm going to connect. So I'm connected now and the hierarchy on the left hand side here. And I'm just going to show the attributes here on the right-hand side. You see the common name here is administrator, and there's a description and an object class. And I could go to the table editor, and I could make some changes here if I wanted to do that. So I could set a password, and it would let me do that. Here's the organizational unit, the OU. And I could say, for example, IT. Here's the address and postal code. 
and I've got a fax number. So there's all sorts of information that I can set here for this particular object with the common name of admin. I haven't set a password. Looks like that's required. I'm not going to change that now. We can take a look at the directory schema. I'm going to discard those changes. You can see the directory schema here with all of the attribute types that are available. And there's quite a number of them. LDAP syntaxes, matching rules, and here's all of the object classes. You can see there's an application entity, an application process, a bootable device, certificate authority, country, IP host, IP network, IP protocol, and here's a person. And you can see that a person must have a common name and a short name, and it may have a description and a see also, a telephone number and a user password. So there's lots of information here, and you can see all of the information in the schema, which is similar, again, to a database, where a database has a schema defining the data that can be stored in it. Same thing here with LDAP. This LDAP server has a schema defining the data that can be stored in it as well. So as I said, LDAP is implemented in Active Directory, and so if you could make a connection to an Active Directory server with this, you may be able to get a lot of useful information from it, particularly if you were able to do username and password. If you can do an anonymous connection, you may be able to get some minimum amount of information if the system or network is properly implemented. With a username and password, you should be able to get a fair amount of information back. Another tool that can be used to connect, and this is under Windows. You can find it on the internet. It's called LDAP Miner. LDAP Miner is just a command line utility, and if I were to connect, I would just do LDAP Miner minus H and the host, and in the case that I've just done with J Explorer. We used 192.168.1.39, so if I were to run LDAP minor, it would be LDAP minor minus H 192.168.1.39. I would use the default port, and unless I had something specific that I wanted to look for, I'd probably use minus D to just dump all the data that I could grab. So that's a tool that would run under Windows and that would be able to extract the same sorts of information in a textual format or a text-based format where we had J Explorer over here that was able to do it in a graphical format. So that's the lightweight directory access protocol and Windows servers running Active Directory aren't the only kind of servers you'll run across. Active Directory servers, definitely good targets but don't expect that that's the only type of LDAP server you're going to run across. You'll find LDAP servers storing all sorts of information. LDAP is a really useful way of organizing a lot of data about people and resources. And that's the lightweight directory access protocol.